chief information officer and other chiefs. Obviously, this is a global statement, a larger statement that does not apply to every industry and every organization at all times, because internal politics, diplomacy, business models and business plans, leadership and culture all play a role. But having said that, in the last several years, there is this growth of other chief positions that report to the CIO in most cases that is not happening in other areas. If we have a CFO, he or she runs all the finance. There is no chief procurement officer or chief accounts payable and accounts receivable officer. And there should be. Yes, there are people who are responsible for that, but there's one person running all the finance. If you look at marketing, there's chief marketing officer. There is no chief digital marketing officer and then chief print marketing officer. Well, there are a couple of companies that have done that and that fell apart. But if you really think about it, there's one, right? If you look at some of the other areas, um, chief operating officer and so forth, you have generally a person who runs that area. Yet in technology, things are slightly different. And I'm trying to figure out why. One, everybody collectively across the organization generally thinks that you know they know more about tech than they know about some of these other areas, so it's okay to um, segment and pull things in different directions. Two, it could actually be CIOs in these roles and their abilities or inabilities to be effective leaders and communicators um, to move things forward. And three, it could really be organizational structure, funding, and support. If a CIO is responsible or expected to lead innovation growth and transform the business, or at the very least run it the way it's meant to be ran in the year that we live in, they can't have 3% of the operating budget of the institution. They should have 10 or maybe more. And within that 3%, 90% of it should not be gone in the first month because it's accounted for annual contracts, maintenances, and other agreements. There's a lot of things to unpack. Position of that role of that individual, their own abilities, staffing and funding of that team. And then you start looking into the growth of some of these other roles. You have a chief information security officer that's been around for a while, not as long as a CIO who started, I believe, in 1981. But they've been around for a while. And in most organizations, it, it, securing technology and running programs and, and, and uh, processes in place to secure it is a function of IT, and that's where they report under CIO. In some other more mature organizations, you have full governance, risk, and compliance under the C, uh, chief information security officer, so then they're more of a peer to CIO. I've seen both models. I've seen them both work and not work. So that depends on a lot of different things. Then you have this growth of chief digital officers, right? Which has kind of uh, leveled off in, in last year or two. Because if you really have a capable CIO, what do you think they do if it's not digital technology and changing the way we're doing things and the way we're conducting our business? Paper, stone tablets, and a chisel? What is it that you think that they do? What's the alternative? Analog, right? Then you have chief data officers. Again, important. And they're almost always under a CIO. Important because organizations have finally realized that there's so much data across their devices, across their servers, across their network, that they're not leveraging in the best possible way. So yes, you need somebody to be responsible for it. Then you get to a chief innovation officer, one of my favorites. Chief innovation officer is a function of a quality, exceptional CIO. He or she is meant to break the models, challenge status quo. So don't take it personally when your CIO likes to rock the boat. That is the responsibility of that role. It's not just to sit back and have orders lobbed over the fence on Friday afternoon to be executed on Monday morning. But it's actually reimagine the model 
be actively engaged across their industry and other industries and see how others are doing it. Those who are of stronger brand, stronger reputation, how are they accomplishing things, certain things, right? Innovation, data, digital, all of those things are responsibilities of all employees. And that all starts with the executive leadership team, not just the CIO or chief information officers or chief, chief data officer or chief digital officer. It's everybody's responsibility to change the way we do things, to collaborate more openly, to help each other, to tear down these silos that have been around for decades, or in some organizations, probably centuries. And this caste system of this group of people is a lot more important than all others. And the rules and regulations do not apply to them, but they apply to everybody else. All of that is changing and it has to change. And those organizations that are willing to make those changes and adapt more quickly are those who will be a lot more successful in years to come and have a greater probability of remaining on the scene and being relevant than those who still either don't see that or see it but refuse to act. Let me know what you think, what your thoughts are on what I just said, chief information officer and other chiefs in that area, and how does that compare to finance, marketing, operations, and so forth. What are your thoughts? How is your organization structured? Does it make sense? And if it does not, what would you do differently? As always, if this is the first video you see, please consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends and colleagues. And most importantly, leave your thoughts below on the topic I just covered. Have a wonderful day.